this here. Speaking of Connor, he messed up his hand. He's uh, not saying whether it's broken or not, but it's in a cast, his left hand. He's been training a lot though, right? Yeah. Like he's been training more. I thought maybe he was looking at a July comeback. They were talking about July. They were talking about they July. Were, yeah. And then it's not he just sure. did a podcast. I haven't listened to it yet. I want to with Tony, Tony Robbins. Robbins. Yeah. But then Tony Robbins got flagged for a bunch of uh, sexual assault. <laughs> so I don't know if it got taken down. Well, I mean, it's all over all the stuff that he said. Like how he didn't really lose to. I haven't seen any of it. I haven't heard any of it. I just uh, saw it was on there because it popped up on my uh, on one of my things. So, but what's he? Have you listened to it, Chin? Uh, I he I heard other shows talk about what he said on there. So he was saying how because of the, the audience, they're not MMA fans, right? So Tony Robbins, yeah, no. So they're just believing everything that's that he's saying. So he was talking about his foot is the reason why he lost the he was injured. fight. Yeah, uh, that's he was legit. he was winning the Floyd Mayweather fight in the beginning, which he kind of was. He was, but then the, the alternative to that is, well, Floyd was just feeling you out, letting you, so it looked like mm. a fight. But it's pretty black and white. He did win some rounds. Yeah, but he convinced people in the audience from what the, their, I guess, Oh, is it live? I think it was a, I think it was a oh, live. Oh, fuck. Match. Oh, there's people in the audience. Yeah. He does it like a live audience. I've seen that show before, too. Tony Robbins? I didn't know he had a show. At, at it, his so, house, I think. So it's a talk show. Kind of, but it could be a a live podcast, maybe? Is it video or is it? Uh, I saw pictures of it, so I didn't see actual video. Tony Robbins, but from his beautiful dude. beach house. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh yeah, it's fucking Tony Robbins. He's like three million dollars just to tax it. Um, that's interesting. Well, yeah, because with with the hardcore MMA fans, Connor saying certain things, it's not gonna fly, right? Mm. But with Tony Robbins fans, Connor could say. Oh, I could beat him with one hand. I just didn't feel well that night. And they, they, they just don't know. So they're like, oh, cool. They know Conor McGregor. I'd be willing to bet, too, that audience knows Conor, doesn't know Khabib. So when he talks about Khabib, they're doing, they don't know who he's talking about. Does he... He says he wants another fight with Floyd Mayweather? He wants to fight Floyd, and he wants a rematch with Khabib. The Khabib one, I see. So he put, at the end of the day, I landed the final blow of the night right on his brother's <laughs> ice. Okay. He's talking about the brawl. Okay. Wow, I can't believe they got into all this. So um, at the end of the day, I landed the final blow of the night right on his brother's eye socket, McGregor said on Robin's podcast. Although the match didn't go my way, the fight went my way. And trust me when I tell you, Tony, this war is not over. If this fight does not happen again, if it does not get reset, it's on them. They're running away. I'm here for the fight. I'm here for the rematch. So Tony's entire audience now, which is on millions and millions, go, oh, Connor wants yeah. a fight. It's not happening because of them. Yeah. All right. And that guy, Leonard Ellerby. I, I definitely want to watch it now. <laughs> I definitely want to watch this interview now. What were you talking about, Leonard? Uh, the guy who... That's his promoter, right? Or, or manager of uh, Floyd. Yeah, he runs Mayweather Promotions. He's basically. interested, obviously. I just don't, the market's not there. I don't think the market's there from casuals or respect. Hardcores didn't want it in the first place. It is 46 minutes long from this. I would definitely watch that when I get home. I gotta be honest, I'm, it's kind of nice that he didn't go on like uh, a major MMA outlet. It, I, think, I think he's gonna be less. I think he's going to be more comfortable talking to Tony than he is, say, a guy who's a journalist, like a Luke Thomas, like a Ben Folks or um, a Brad Okamoto. Like, he's going to be way more comfortable and just kind of a little loosey-goosey, just throwing out gems, talking to Tony. And Tony's not going to push him. Tony's not going to be like, well, when you got this or that, you know. Mm -hmm. He put uh, that guy separated, and the final one was the original brother who was on top of the cage. Damn, he's talking about the fight, huh? He broke free from the security, ran 100 miles towards me. He threw a right hand. As he threw the right hand, I threw a left hand. Boom. There's an image, an aerial image of the right hand just whipping my face. My left hand just landing flush down the pipe. The final blow of the night, so that's it. I win. He, um, so what makes Connor great, he's painting a narrative, right? So um, it's it's tough and i and if you're connor he's doing the right thing painting the narrative that he wants with the power that he wants um because khabib's not going to go on tony robbins khabib um doesn't have the same opportunities the same voice in the states as khabib as yeah. conor mcgregor so khabib can go to russia and paint the, 
Khabib can paint the narrative how he wants in Russia, but in America, the narrative is based off what Connor says, unfortunately. But that's us, what makes Connor special. So, with Connor saying all this, these people who have no idea about the sport are like, oh man, can you, I can't wait to see him Khabib go again. I would much rather fight Khabib than McGregor. I, I, don't, I don't think you should fight either right away. I think uh, you should fight Mayweather. one. Yeah, sorry. Mayweather uh, and Khabib should not be the next fight for, for Connor if he's going to fight again. But obviously, he's interested in uh, coming back. There's, there's definitely other fights I think he should do in the UFC if he's going to continue to fight. Mm. I think it was smart he went on Tony Robbins. Very smart. More fans. Yeah. More fans, more mainstream, not so niche. The sports become more and more niche as it's behind the paywall. Um, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. The narrative's being painted. Like, we haven't heard from Khabib at all, right? We heard from his manager. That's not the same. Yeah. Just not the same at all. About his manager, Ali Abdelaziz, mm -hmm. ESPN MMA posted this tweet uh, last week. It's just about the top guys in the in the division, flyweight division. And then, so this is the image here. Here's a graphic. There's Odd Connor. men out. Because Khabib and Poirier are set. Fruz and Cerrone are set. Yeah. So they got Connor and Justin Gaethje. So Ali Abdelaziz took that graphic and tweeted it himself. But then he put a chicken head on Connor and a clown face on Ferguson. Why would we put a right? clown face on Ferguson? They had issues before. They used to talk smack before. Yeah, but not really. Now they they respect each other. Like he was telling me, he goes, me and Tony are cool. We see each other. We have respect for each other. Put a clown face, especially what Tony's going through. Who's, exactly. Who's not rooting for Tony? How can exactly. you not root for Tony right now? You know, the guy came from, you know, a rough kind of mental health issue. And now he's fighting Cowboy. He's had a long layoff. No one deserves a title shot more. It doesn't make sense why you do that. Yeah. So this is what he wrote. A real champion fighting the number one contender and a clown fighting a cowboy and a quitter fighting someone who will take this soul away. That's just him trying to get Gaethje the fight. He's his manager. You, every, you guys know um, Gaethje's not going to talk shit, really. So, well, that's just him trying to do his job. I do not see Connor taking the Gaethje fight. Mm. Well, Ferguson replied, ain't no clowning around, you fake fuck. Hilarious. Ain't no clown around, you fake fuck. Uh, you better leave my name out your mouth before I mop the mat with your sorry ass. You ain't shit without your homeboys, you snitch. No pride, no guts, just like your paper chump. Khabib, see you in person soon. So it gets a little personal by saying see you in person. If, and you know they're gonna, there's gonna be an issue in person. And this is the last, this is how it ended. So this is Ali's response. You fighting under the card June 8th? You, what's up with the language? What's up with the grammar? You fighting on the undercard June 8th. Focus on that. Shut your mouth. Talk is cheap. Next time you see me, do something about it, punk boy. And then this is what Ferguson wrote. I can't stoop to your level anymore. You're an embarrassment to the sport, to all MMA fans. I'm too focused for you and anyone else. Yet I'm fighting on the undercard for UFC 238, but I don't mind. It's champ shit only, Ali. Something you'll never know about. Praying for you. And then it all ends with Ali says, I'm going to pray. I'm going you. to pray for you too. Good night, champ. Hand on your face. Mm. That got eight retweets. <laughs> That's what's a bummer. That whole exchange was a bummer. What the fact that the exchange even came up though, that Ali's doing that to Tony was very weird. It, I mean, it, it makes fun for, you know, we're just living a soap opera now with MMA and boxing. So it makes it fun, gives people like me something to talk about or that with something to talk about um for tony and this this goes for anyone i, I think it is it also got brought to my attention for kevin durant who was going back and forth or even john jones or uh durant who who went back and forth he went back and forth with an analyst right that's whatever that guy's in the business this is a little similar same thing here but Durant even went to a guy who had, I don't know, 200 followers, who has like an egg as an avatar. The, the, usually the, the rule of thumb is, is you never punch down. So if Kevin Durant got criticized by LeBron, you go at LeBron. You go hard at LeBron. You guys can engage because you're on the same playing field. If you can't engage the trolls, you can't engage you know, those who can't critique. So you do not want to engage with them. That doesn't make sense, man. You get, they, they get fuel and energy off that. I guess with Tony here, gives us something to talk about, but same time, you know, Tony does have a huge fight coming up. 
I really think it, but also Khabib and the, a lot of Ali's guys aren't going to talk shit. So this is why Ali being the manager, he, he kind of does it for him. Mm. You know, people are talking, they get you talking about it. Sure. The, the, what I don't like is let's say Tony could be, or Tony and Ali saw each other. If they get a physical altercation, that's, that's where it crosses the line. It seems like that could happen. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Good chance it happens. And you hit the nail on the head when, like, it's because Tony's going through all this stuff. I'm just surprised that he would want to do something like that to him now. Especially Ollie? now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you know, as Emma, as a community, you know, and you're, you're in this kind of that, that realm, you're in that universe, Ali. Like when one guy's down, it's, it's more than fighting. When a guy's suffering from uh, mental illness and, you know, uh, personal issues, you really don't go after that. That's kind of, I don't know, it's like baseball. Those are the unspoken rules, man. Yeah. Especially if you're not fighting him. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.